So welcome along everyone to a great little paint along and we've got big Brian, a great guy who's going to be uh, helping us out and throwing the paint down. So we're just going to start off with a bit of clear water. We're dropping this on to the circles that will make the cherries. So we're just dabbing that on and keeping it nice and simple. A little bit of clear water around the outside so it can allow some of the colours to just drift off. The first colour we're going to be using is Rose Opera, which is a Daniel Smith's Vibrant Pink. And we're just throwing that on and notice the way we curl it around the shape of the cherries trying to keep a little bit of light in the center so we don't just cover it we circle around and that captures that little bit of light it saves you uh, having to use masking fluid it retains the white of the paper instead so what could be simpler A little bit of cad red now, sorry, cadmium orange, I do apologise. Just again circling round, but we're just going in the opposite direction to the uh, Rose Opera. And this allows it to bleed in rather than just overwhelm the colours that are already there. Cadmium orange, cadmium red now. I think I've got my wrong teeth in today. Cadmium red again, circling round. That repeated action will pay dividends. And we're just each time adding a little bit more to the cherry shapes. Now, don't get confused by where they overlap, it doesn't matter. We'll pick those out a little bit later on. So we're just circling round, and you can already see little cherries start to form eh? as if by magic a magic show before your very eyes a lizard and crimson same thing but we're trying to place this at the base of the cherries away from the lighter area so wherever the uh, light dot is we place this away and on the same angle so these are slightly to the right in the center they can vary a bit but generally slightly to the right big brian's doing a great deal of work here he's a great guy he'll need to sit down and a cup of tea very very soon i can see him huffing and a puffing A little bit of water just around the area and now we're going in with royal blue so we're going this to a sort of mid standard thickness royal blue just at the base there notice I'm not overly touching the cherries I'm still reshaping the outside actually so if I touch those I know the uh, reds are going to bleed straight into the blue so I keep it away and just gently introduce it like at a cocktail party. Would you like to meet Royal Blue? Absolutely. Delighted to have met your acquaintance. So now I'm just adding a little bit of Royal Blue to the top edge, top corner, top uh, left there. And again, that circular motion. Just going in with a little bit of sap green now. Just plain old sap green from the tube. And these are going to uh, depict the leaves. And again, we're just shaping leaves. And we're not really just painting the green bits as the leaf. We're just building up that shape like we did with the cherry, a round shape. Now we're just going to do 
leaf shapes. Make sure they're reasonable size. You don't want a million of them on there. Just half a million's fine. this on the top portion of the painting, leaf shapes circling round the cherries. Mini Dave now, great little dagger brush there. Get a nice fine definitive line with cobalt blue. So uh, Windsor and Newton colour. Just chopping around the base of the cherries again. That repeated pattern. Circles and leaves, circles and leaves. I may write a book called Circles and Leaves. It'd be about circles and leaves. Anyway, we're just shaping base of cherries and edge of leaves, just with cobalt blue there. So we just shape a little bit over the top edge like we did with the bottom. So we're reversing the circle shape, just going over the top. And then we bleed off the blue to shape some of the leaves. throwing a little bit of purple again around the right hand side of the cherries again just to give them that form and also that's the darker section that is where the light don't really shine so once you've got a few at the front then you can just do sections of the ones at the back because they're covered by the shape of the uh, cherries at the front Mini Dave there, just using the wider angle of him, is great little brush for that. Just scooting it round, and he's uh, ready to rumble. I'm just going to use a little bit of Indian red to put the little hole where the stem grows from. So that's a little dark section. Alter it on them. Don't just have them all in the same position on each cherry. Just a little mark, that's all it is. And the paper should be fairly dry by now, so it will stay where you've placed it. It won't go running off. now on the fabulous Miss Rigger and we're just dragging this on a sort of damp surface and then this will just give us a very faint suggestion of the stems.
alter the angle as well don't just all go in straight up just change them to one side and also bend them a bit as well so they're not dead straight that's how they would be in uh, real life if you go to a cherry shop if one exists near you have a little look always look at the object the real object will be better than photographs because it's uh, exactly how it is and then you can get your reference from there and enjoy the cherries as well a little bit of perylene green just picking around the leaves now just a few of them not too much remember this is the shape behind the leaves it's not the actual leaf itself so the dark edge with the little serrations are where the little leaf is uh, jagged and just chopped in and then we just place that on few little lines down the center of the leaf there just as the veins this will just uh, give more detail to the, uh, the actual leaf and then under a few cherries that you can see don't forcibly add the shapes on when you you don't need to so you don't have to explain all of them just a few cherries are more than enough Miss Riga really doing a good job here so Miss Rigger is a size 6 Rigger brush, really good for this sort of thing. If you use a small stumpy brush, you may be far more in control of it, but it'll take a lot longer and it won't be as free in the, uh, the line work, in the form. If you just over the uh, left hand side, a bit of water just pushing the pigment about this is a lot lighter but it's still allowing us to give a little bit of shape and form to the leaves and in the gaps in between we we'll just jump in there a little bit of uh, cobalt blue again so we go up, going behind the shape of the top cherry and then just scooting round and just building up a little section to help explain that circle. Just add in a little bit of Indian red to the stems. Now not all the way along, wherever the line's been left in water will have dried a bit. We just add a little bit more in a stronger tone just to uh, help you uh, detail the stem there simple easy above all relaxing good fun don't get stressed by it don't try and force it just see what happens and it will come together little shadows there cast on the cherries so once we've got the stems on we throw a little shadow on and that gives a suggestion of the light as well so I do hope you've enjoyed this uh, uh, slightly shorter uh, tutorial. If you'd like to see the full version with uh, written narration and the full uh, description as we, as we uh, paint, then uh, drop by my uh, Patreon channel. Uh, there's a uh, click link below in the description and there's lots of tutorials on there to uh, get involved with and learn this technique and above all enjoy your painting journey so thanks so much for watching i do hope you've enjoyed this and i shall catch you again very very soon and don't forget to subscribe to my uh, youtube channel just by clicking subscribe below